Let's talk Mexico. So much going on right now. Mexico has banned smoking. Temporary residency. <laughs> A Russian family of four decided to visit Cancun and ordered an Uber. They got into the Uber, and as soon as the Uber left, a local taxi driver started to aggressively follow the Uber driver. And so apparently the Uber driver took very bizarre routes to try to avoid and kind of lose the taxi driver. However, unfortunately, three other taxi drivers also decided to engage, and ultimately the four taxi drivers were able to stop the Uber driver. Lots of yelling going on, the taxi drivers trying to get this Russian family out of the Uber, letting them know that the Ubers were operating illegally and that they had to go with them. Now, I, I just can you imagine, first of all, having a bunch of taxi drivers forcibly stopping your Uber, wanting you to get out of the car and then getting into their car? Like the answer is a hell no from me. As you can expect, this Russian family was super petrified. Lots of social media recordings, it's all over TikTok. The Uber driver called the police, they called 911, and the police showed up while this exchange was happening and nobody got in trouble. No arrests were made, no citations, no tickets, no nothing. It was just, hey, taxi drivers, calm down, leave them alone, Uber driver, continue on, because yes, we are allowed to have Uber drivers here. So pretty big deal going on in Cancun right now. Oh, and part of the issue with the Uber versus taxi is taxi drivers are considered a form of public transportation. And so they have to have very specific licensing and permission to be a taxi driver. Uber, on the other hand, is considered a private organization, a private company, and so they're not required to have the same licensing and they just need a business license. I'm not 100% if it is a judge in Quintana Roo, which is the state that Cancun resides in, or if it's a Mexico-wide, little gray area on that, but either way, a judge, at least in Quintana Roo, ruled that Uber does not need special permission to operate in a particular city. So long as they have a business license, they're good to go. So yes, the fight with Uber kind of continues here in Mexico where taxi drivers just are frustrated at kind of the global ease of using an Uber, which is why travelers around the world tend to kind of prefer it. So unfortunately, I do predict continued Uber versus taxi conflicts. Hopefully not to the scenario where taxi drivers are physically forcing Uber drivers to get off the road. And also, by the way, crazy part. Not only was nobody arrested during this incident, but the police essentially told the taxis to leave. The Uber driver was too scared to continue taking the family to their hotel. And so this Russian family with two small children were left on the side of the road in Cancun, probably a place that they don't know very well, to kind of figure out how to get home. Now, luckily a local who witnessed the entire thing after the police, Uber and taxis left, they actually came by and offered to take this young family back to their hotel. So they did end up okay. But technically speaking, at Odark 30, they were left on the side of the road to figure it out with two very young kids. Kind of a horrific story. So thank goodness for Mexican hospitality, but not thank goodness for Mexican business or police hospitality. And speaking of Cancun, Jordan from Tangerine Travels was in Cancun and he posted on Facebook this message that Hertz Rental Car is trying to send him to jail happening right now and that he's at the Hertz Rental Car office in the Cancun airport. Now he didn't actually go to jail, everything turned out okay. And in the comments he did mention that the basic problem was he felt he was being scammed by Hertz Rental Car. He does not explain why or how he was being scammed, but that he did pull out his camera to record. And it was the recording that Hertz Rental Car had an issue with. And supposedly they called the National Guard. Now Jordan has doubts as to whether they actually did because the National Guard definitely did not come. But either way, I cannot wait to find out more detail because yeah, I'm always super interested in knowing these kinds of details. I will say as a YouTuber and as somebody that currently records my life in Mexico, there are many, many places in Mexico that would really rather we not record there. Of course, anywhere that is private property, so Walmart, the OXO, anywhere there's security, like the airport or even the malls, there are many times where people will tell me, please don't record. And then here in the Chiapas in particular, just the locals, generally speaking, do not appreciate being recorded. And so yeah, pulling out the camera and recording is not necessarily as easy as we might make it look. So it is highly possible that Hertz, which is of course a private company, has some kind of 
requirement that we not record. But yeah, lots of crazy going on in Cancun right now. And of course, you guys probably already know that last Sunday, January 15th, Mexico has passed a ban on smoking in public places. One of the strictest anti-tobacco laws in the world. This includes hotels, restaurants, bars, even in open parks. You are no longer allowed to smoke in Mexico. And so, of course, bar owners and restaurant owners are super upset at this. Smokers are pretty upset at this. And this will... It will hit tourism, it will not hit tourism. So one, approximately 14% of Mexican adults smoke as opposed to 25% of Americans and parts of Europe where it's like 50%. So a lot of the smoking bans will probably affect tourists slash foreigners more than the actual locals with the exception of, of course, business owners where their clientele tends to smoke. So yes, very big deal. In addition to not being able to smoke in these places, advertising for cigarettes have also been banned, which means when you go to your local OXO or Tienda, you will no longer see a tray of cigarette options. They all have to be hidden. Some places are putting it under the counter. Some places are literally just covering the cigarettes with like a panel or something. So you can't technically see the cigarettes. So instead you have to ask the proprietor or the cashier, you know, do they have cigarettes available? What cigarettes are available? Um, some places are offering you like a list, like a menu, of different cigarettes they have available for you to choose from but you will no longer be able to go into a store and visually see the cigarettes because they're now hidden and of course last year in Mexico there was already a ban put on vaping the AMLO administration banned the sale of e-cigarettes throughout the country the selling of vaping products is at least a little bit limited I'm hearing conflicting reports about how different cities are handling it but either way Mexico is pushing pretty hard against smoking which as a non-smoker myself I think that's a great thing one of the things you'll often hear is that putting a a ban on smoking will hurt tourism and yes for sure places like bars will be hit the hardest restaurants will be hit a little bit but when we look at other countries that have similar bans such as the UK what actually tends to happen is tourism ultimately goes up because most of the world actually doesn't smoke so if there's a perceived notion that in Mexico, a non-smoker can happily traverse the entire country without really worrying about secondhand smoke, it actually makes Mexico look a lot more appealing. So just big picture, most people actually don't smoke. Therefore worldwide, most people do prefer smoking bans. That being said, if you are a smoker, lots of restaurants, hotels, bars are creating like smoking areas, designated smoking areas where somebody can smoke. However, Mexico has this uh, requirement that food cannot be sold in smoking areas, which means like your the designated smoking area at a restaurant will not be able to serve you meals. So you can go to the designated smoking area, have your cigarette, and then come back into the restaurant and have your meal, but you cannot in the area where you're allowed to smoke order a drink or order snacks, nothing. It's just like a place for you to go, have a cigarette, come back in and eat. So yeah, it's not necessarily a fun scenario for smokers, especially those who enjoy smoking while eating. My dad's a smoker and I remember when we first moved to California as a kid, that was a huge adjustment for him. Like just not being able to smoke anywhere. Now it's a lot more common to have non-smoking areas in the US, so it's, he's over it. But I do remember at the time that he really disliked California for many reasons, but one of which was the lack of smoking spaces available. So if you are a smoker and you're coming to Mexico, I do recommend calling the hotel and just asking them what the smoking situation is. It is much more limited today. Next, let's talk really quickly about residency requirements. So as you know, 2023, every January, Mexico reserves the right to increase or change requirements for temporary or permanent residency. And as expected this year, the financial solvency requirements have definitely increased. Most locations requiring about 3,200 US dollars a month income, some places ranging much higher. And so it has become much more difficult for people with fixed incomes to get temporary residency here. So yeah, every year it seems to be climbing, especially in the last couple of years. Now, as you guys may or may not know, the way I got temporary residency last year, we didn't leave Mexico. We didn't prove financial solvency. And we got four years. <laughs> was through the regularization program, which essentially is a program that forgives people for overstaying their visas here in Mexico. Now there's lots of specific rules. I don't want to go into all the details but the general gist is that you have been in Mexico for a certain period of time that you are currently past your FMM date right you're past your tourist FMM date and I was able to immediately get a four-year temporary residency whereas the normal temporary residency program requires you to do one year at first and then you can apply for three additional years it's honestly an amazing program but 
that this year many locations have stopped allowing the program. So the program is not completely dead, but every state gets to kind of analyze if they're going to continue with the program or not. Here in the Chiapas, to my knowledge, they've never allowed us to use that program, which is why last year Alex and I had to go to Merida to do the whole process. We of course use Barbie from Merida the Moves to help us with everything. Using a lawyer or trusted provider who can help you through the regularization program is super smart. I am beyond grateful that Barbie helped me with this program because otherwise I would not be here today telling you that I'm a temp resident. But with this new year and with lots of places stopping the program, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how many locations are allowing it. I think a lot of places are actually still finalizing if they're going to allow it and what rules they're going to use. So this is definitely the time if you think you're going to use that program to get a hold of a lawyer or an immigration liaison who can help you figure out all the details. Now I do know a couple days ago Barbie did still get somebody temporary residency using that program but she mentioned that lots of rules are changing so it's not quite as predictable as it was before. Hopefully she'll be able to like finesse through all the crazy and figure out the details but technically speaking as of right now Merida is still allowing people to get temporary residency through the regularization program. I believe San Miguel de Allende is also allowing it, but I'm not sure if many other cities or states are allowing it. So yes, definitely not as easy to get as it was last year. And last but not least, this month is the time for the Grand Fiesta of Chiapas de Corzo, which is a city or municipality here in the Chiapas. Super interesting celebration, very hot. It's like the first thing that enters my mind every time I leave San Chris is that other parts of Mexico is just very, very hot. And I have no idea how the parachicos were wearing these outfits. I can tell you that when they pulled up their mask, beads of sweat everywhere. So they were not necessarily comfortable, but at the same time, they were happily celebrating. So very cool event to witness. Technically speaking, the celebration lasts from the 8th to the 23rd of January. However, these very visual parades happen from the 15th to the 21st. So that would be the time period I recommend you visit. Now I will say here in San Chris, during various festivities, we do see the parachicos, especially in parades. So it's not that this was my first time seeing the parachicos or all the other fun characters of the celebration, but if you're able to go to Chapa de Corzo, the kind of the cool thing is the parachicos, the chapanecos, they distinctly outnumber any tourists, any visitors. And so it was a really cool experience just to be amongst the crowd. And of course, if you go, the dish you absolutely must try. I would call it a soup, I guess, but it is pepita con tasajo. And so it's like a pumpkin soup. Pepita is the pumpkin seed. So it's a pumpkin-y soup with some dried beef pieces. So kind of the consistency of cream of wheat, but with the yummy calabaza or pumpkin flavor. Absolute must. So that's it for this edition. Let me know if you've got any questions or concerns in the comments below, and I'll see you next week.